Hey there everyone, my name is Joshua Molyans and today I'm going to be showing you how to use WISE external sources with Unreal Engine. An external source is where, instead of providing an audio file for WISE to convert and play, the audio designer specifies that the audio will be provided at runtime by the engine. This is useful in lots of contexts, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'll be using it to play dialogue for an RPG style dialogue system. This is useful because a system such as this could house hundreds of thousands of lines and it is inefficient to create switches and events for every single one. In order to get this working, we'll start in WISE. This project is using the WISE Unreal integration. This has already been set up and is outside the scope of this tutorial. The WISE version is 2022.1.11 and the Unreal version is 5.3. We'll start by creating a sound voice in WISE. Once created, we can see that it is turned red, indicating it currently has no source. To fix that, we will double click on our sound voice and go to the contents editor. Here we will click add source and select external source. Once created, you can see that our external source has been assigned a cookie. This is important as it will later be used to set our external source in Unreal. Then with the sound voice you've just created, create an event that references it so that you can play it in game. The next step is to tell WISE which audio we'll be using as an external source so it knows which audio to convert when we generate our sound banks. This requires you to create an XML file that contains data about these files. Although this could be a grueling process on its own, you can use a very useful and free tool created by Dara Crawford to generate this file for you. A link to that tool can be found in the description. Once we have this tool downloaded, the input folder should be the place that your WAV files are stored. This should be somewhere within your WISE project. The output folder is the place where you want the XML file to be generated. Once you've chosen a name for your XML file, hit Generate XML. Look at that. XML file generated successfully. Your file should look something like this. You can see that the root listed is the directory where your files are stored and all of your files are listed below. You can specify more information about these files if you wish, such as how to convert them or where to convert them to. Otherwise, these will be defaulted to your project's default settings. More information about this can be found on the Audio Kinetic Integrating External Sources page linked in the description. There is one final thing to do before this file is ready to use. Simply change the file extension from .xml to .wsources. Windows will get upset at this, but that is okay. Once your file has the extension .wsources, you're good to go. Now we have our .wsources file, we just need to tell WISE where it is. To do this, we go to our project settings and then the external sources tab. Here we need to set our input path, which should be our .wsources file. We also need to set our output path, which is the default location we want these files to be placed at once converted. Now, all we need to do is hit generate sound banks. WISE will throw a warning if we haven't set any conversion settings in our WSources file, but that's not an issue as it will just use our default settings. Now it is time to save our WISE project and open up Unreal. Before we can start using external sources in Unreal, we need to enable the WISE simple external source manager. To do this, we must find our default engine.ini file and make sure it contains the line wise file handler module name equals wise simple external source. If it does not, simply copy and paste it from the description of this video and save the file. Next, within our Unreal project settings, we should scroll to the bottom and find the wise simple external source settings. Here we will find three settings. The first, Media Info Table is where we will tell Unreal the details of the converted files we wish to use as external sources. A reminder that now we have converted our audio, they will be WEM files rather than WAV files. Next, we need to create data tables to fill these settings with. To do this, go to the Unreal Content Browser and right click to create something new. Under the Miscellaneous tab, you will find you can create a data table. When the pick row structure pop-up appears, type external sources and you'll see both the types of data table that we need to make. Create two data tables, one of each type, and name them accordingly. The media info table is where we will tell Unreal which files we are using as external sources. In this newly created data table, there are eight rows. Row name is the identifier for that row of the table. 
External Source Media Info ID is the unique identifier for that piece of audio and must match the row name exactly. Media Name is the file name with the extension of the media we wish to use. Remember that these are the converted WEM files and not the original WAV files. According to the audio kinetic documentation, Codec ID is the ID of the codec used to decode the media data. B is streamed determines whether to load the media as streaming or in memory. B use device memory determines whether to use device specific memory and only applies to in memory media. Memory alignment chooses which memory alignment to use. This, once again, only applies to in memory media. Prefetch size determines the amount of data to prefetch in bytes, which only applies to streaming media. For this small tutorial project, the only three columns we need to worry about are the first three, row name, external source media info ID, and media name. Here you can see an example media info table with the row name and external source media info ID going up by one each time, and the media name representing each converted audio file. The external source default media table looks like this. This is an optional table used for setting default values to every external source. The first two columns, row name and external source cookie, must be exactly equal to the cookie that we saw in WISE earlier when we created our external source. The external source media name should match the name of the external source in WISE. The media info ID is the row name from your media info table to set the external source to by default. Here in this example, you can see that the row name and the external source cookie are set to the cookie found in WISE earlier, and the media info ID and media name are set to the correct media info ID from the media info table and the name of the file that occupies that row. I apologize for everything being named media info. I understand that might be confusing, but uh, we'll get there. <laughs> Now that we have filled out these data tables, we can return to the Unreal project settings and set them to the tables we have just created. While we're here, we should set our external source staging directory to the directory where our converted files are stored, if we haven't already done so. Now we have done all of the setup required in order to set the external source media from within the blueprints. If you've made it this far, I just want to say thanks for sticking with me. That last bit can be quite intense. It stressed me out when I was learning it, and it might be stressing you out as well. If you have any problems, just chuck them in the comments. I'll be right there. Um, I don't do anything else. All audio, all the time. Thank you. Now it's finally time to set the external source in Blueprints. This can happen anywhere at any time, but in this instance, I'll be setting it within events in a dialog tree. I am using the Not Yet dialog system, a link to which I'll leave in the description. Setting up this dialog system is outside the scope of this tutorial, but a tutorial can be found on the Not Yet website. In each node on this dialog tree, I am calling two events. One which sets the variable media ID to set to the row of the dialog line that I want to play, and one which sets the external source, stops other instances of the dialog event, and then plays the dialog event with the correct source. Here you can see that when the dialog event is called, we immediately set the external source media ID to the media ID to set variable, which corresponds to a row on our media info table. There are two main ways to set an external source, by file name or by ID. I prefer ID as it is a lot easier to work with integers than strings in this case, but there may be other use cases that are, are different. The external source also needs to be provided with the external source cookie that we saw in WISE when we first created the source. Once given the ID and the cookie, the external source will have been set. Then all you need to do is post the event and you've implemented the sources. Congratulations. And now a quick example of it working from my project. Hey, As you can see, I pick a dialog option. He, he speaks, okay. pick a dialog option, I'll next line that. comes along. Why must we fight? I can't take dying again. As with one dialog event, one dialog source that is then changing through the code. 